Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball-ish repair video for you today. We have been working on these two Williams Pennant Fever Pitch and Bat games from 1984. These are the only Williams System 8 games that were massive re massively released. Or, what was it, massive? Is that the best word for it? Widely released. Uh, so if you get a System 8 game, this is the only one. And it's not really a pinball machine. They are pitch and bat games. So they have a uh, baseball theme, and they have a... Uh, it, you press one button to throw a pitch, and press the other button to hit it with the bat. So these things are really cool, and we've got them both up and running, but they're not working very well because the uh, bat needs work, and the pitching unit needs work, and there's a big magnet under the play field that needs work. So we've been filming video after video. There's been six or seven of them already. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out. They're here on our channel. And if you didn't watch them, where have you been? We've been working our butt off doing video after video. And look, we've already got them up and running in a track mode. We did power supply repair. We did wiring harness repair. We did PCB repair. I almost said PCB board, and that really pisses off the, the engineers whenever I do that. Um, but we've been fixing on, we've been working on these a lot, and we finally got them to the point where they're up in, in the track pretty reliably, and now we're going to work on the bats and the pitching units and the magnets, so uh, stay tuned. Um, I'll, uh, I'll lift up the play field on this one, and we'll check out the bat unit first and see what we can, uh, see what we can see. Okay, so on both of these, this is the pitching unit. And it has a lot of areas that you need to oil. So we're going to oil that. Basically, you have three you have three balls you can throw. The fastball, which is a straight down the middle, the change up, which is a slower one, and the curve, which is the curve. So the the curve is the fastball, but this magnet hits and it moves the ball out of the way of the bat a little bit. Now you can also get a you can get a ball on the game. So you can let the uh, um, I believe you can. I think I've got that right. You can get a ball in a game, so you can just not swing and let the curve go by, and it'll be a, a ball if you didn't swing the bat. Um, but basically, there is a little lever here that's like a little counterweight that has to do with that's what hits the ball when it spins around. And this little clip here, if this pulls in, that's what makes the change up so like this coil can pull in which moves another whatever and it makes the ball go slower so it's a genius little contraption um, that we need to oil to make sure that it's run, working right but usually you don't have too much trouble out of that where you've got the trouble is up here on the bat so the this bat everything on it is about slab worn out so all of that wear in it like that all of that is making it weaker where it doesn't swing as hard there's also a big rheostat up here that can be used to adjust the power but it's weak enough now that it can't knock the ball all the way up into the uh, the home run area so if you hit that ramp just right it'll knock it up into the home run this one on this side has a really strong bat where it might even be too strong we might have to turn it down but on this side it's not quite strong enough so most of these parts are obsolete you can't get anymore but uh, they made Slugfest a few years later, and you, I think you can still get everything for Slugfest. So some of these we've got, some of these we don't, but we're going to replace what we have and see if we can uh, see if we can get it to work a little better. Cleaning it up will help it too. So I'll start taking that apart, and then we'll compare it to the, the parts that we already have. So here's the old linkage. This spins around and goes through the play field, and the bat mounts at the top. Crack. <laughs> And so that's that piece. It seems to actually be in pretty good shape. And then it mounts with a stud to this piece, which is broken. So it has this middle thing in here that's not supposed to be loose like that. And then this top piece is supposed to be, you know, pressed into this because this goes over the shaft and it pivots on it. So I was able to get a new one of those with the 
stud in the middle like it's supposed to have. Instead of that screw, you can see all of the play in that part. That's going to fix a lot of it right there. Okay, and then this center link is probably pretty worn. So I was able to get a new one of those too. This is kind of hard to find. Um, I got it from Pinball Resource. A5957. And then this is the part um, here that we needed. A4690. I believe these are still pretty pretty well available because they, uh, I think that's the same part on Slugfest. So I'm going to take this. I saw that play there. I'm going to take this cotter pin out. And install the new couple things. And that should get us in a lot better shape. Now over left on the... Uh, actual machine there's not much there's the coil there's supposed to be a little pin that sticks in here so we're going to see what we can do about that and then there's a couple rubber um, things over here that are still working fine but they're a little uh, they're a little old so we'll replace those okay folks so in the manual this is how they show it and this appears to be pretty much what's in the game but some of it's missing so you got the base plate Okay, and there is a shaft that sticks down through the base plate and then the, the bat that attaches on the front. So that's this part. It seems to be just fine. You can see though a lot of weld work on the top of it. it. They may have welded it back together at one point or it may have came from the factory that sloppy, I don't know. But uh, so that part appears fine to me. And then in that part there is a big bolt that mat that mounts okay so that is uh, this part and I took it off and was able to put it back on all of that is good <clears throat> so then it mounts into this part which is this is the old one that had um, the weldment broke there and also broke off of this uh, I've got it backwards so this shaft was broke, and then also this was broke off. So it was all kind of just sitting on there. But now we've got one nice solid piece. Look at that, brand new. And then once I, once you slide it back on the base plate, there's a little C-clip you have to put on. We've got that. Okay, and then attached to that is this linkage here. There is this little piece that hangs down under it right there that doesn't go to anything. I don't know why they did that. It might be that that piece was used in an older machine and it had a purpose on the older machine. And I put it on there. You can see there's a place for a clip too. But in the schematics it doesn't show you doing anything with it. So I think they just used an older piece that they had used on some other uh, equipment. And it mounts to the uh, this piece. And then there's supposed to be a washer above it and a C-clip. I forgot to put the washer on, but I'll do that. So we'll put a washer on that, and that will hold it down a little bit more flat. Okay, so moving right along at the top of this, in that hole there is a big spring that goes from there all the way back over to the mounting plate that the coil sits on. And we've got that. So this, this linkage mounts into this plunger with a little uh, pin with a cotter key in the other end of it. And we were able to do that as well. So the plunger is in pretty good shape. The pin inside is in pretty good shape. There's just a little bit of wiggle, but that's kind of typical of old pinball machines. They had a little bit of play. So it's nowhere near as bad as it was. So I think that will do us well too. This piece that they had, um, looks like is the same as this piece but they have it mounted backwards so the big end goes on this end to go around that stud right that's where the little post would have been and then this end is smaller but they swapped it around so that they could put a new bolt in it because they had no way to attach it to there they should have put a bigger bolt through there under here but whatever so we got a new one so that's all cool so that linkage there is what we're going to replace and see if that gets our bat working a lot better. The coil is fine. It, it hits the ball and everything. Um, and it's all mounted in there fine. The only other thing is this. 
So the coil mounts down flat there. Oh, wait a minute, I can show you on this. I can show you on this other one. Yeah, there you go. So this is the assembled diagram. So all of this we have, no problems there. Um, this is the part that we were just messing with, no problems there. There's a big spring that goes from there to there that's missing in this drawing. We have these two rubber bumpers. Um, there is this thing, this roller here, that lays on top of that plate, that linkage, and I guess keeps it straight. So we, uh, I have that, but I don't have, I don't have both parts. I just have the shaft. I don't have the piece of metal that goes on top of it, the roller. So I'm going to put the shaft in there, but I don't know that it'll even be touching it, but at least it'll be, <laughs> part of it will be in there. You can't get that part that I can see. There might be a, a part number that was used in a different machine that's basically the same thing, but I can't find it. But that should get us, right now it's completely missing. So that should get us a lot stronger though. So we'll uh, we'll bolt all this stuff back in the machine and see how it looks. Oh, and then this is also the lubrication chart. So you have to put grease on it. Now on some of these they are pointing to, it looks like the C-clip, but I think what they're saying is to put it on both ends. So they're saying oil here, or grease here, and grease here. They're saying uh, grease here, grease here, grease here, or six. Six is the other end of the bat where it sticks through the play field. Grease that and grease that where it's metal on metal. So basically, if, if you don't know where to put it, you want to put it anywhere that metal touches metal. If metal touches nylon, you don't need it. And the, the, some people b believe that the oil will actually, depending on which kind you use, will actually make the nylon swell a little bit. And if it does, it makes things not work as well. So you want to put oil anywhere metal touches metal. But if it's nylon touching nylon, no oil. If it's nylon touching metal, no oil. But we got a bunch of metal touching metal here, which is why they wear out. They just get so much wear that they uh, they wear out and need replaced. Okay, so I'll slide all that back in. We'll see what we got. Okay, folks. So we popped it back in. It's working, but this is the wrong coil. I didn't order the right one. But I'm gonna I'm gonna order one of these. Um, but we've got it back together, but with the wrong coil. So this is how it ended up. This coil, it, it's completely different than the one that's supposed to be in there. Kind of looks similar, but it's missing a coil sleeve and everything else. It's just, it's not the right stuff. So I've ordered one of those. We'll get it in soon. Um, but we should be able to play it for now like that. Um, and then the pitching unit, we oiled and oiled and oiled. So I figured out that whenever Matt and I were playing it the other night, we were playing it all wrong because the back glass wasn't on it. I didn't catch it. We were playing a one-player game, and you can't select the pitches on a one-player game. But see, this is the old control panel. So the original control panels were green like this, and they just said, fast curve, change up, and bat. This bat button has been replaced. That's the bat button off of a slugfest, which, like we said, was the next one. So, there was a later control panel. They made, I guess they made a few runs of these. There was a later control panel that was black, and it says one player pitch, and it points to that. But I think all three of them work. But if you're playing a one player game, you can't tell it what pitch to throw you because you know you're playing against the computer. So it just comes up with the pitch. So it does them randomly. So you have to play a two player game. To be able to actually select the pitch and see what it's doing. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, but whenever you do a fast a fastball, let me get around here where you can see it. Whenever you do a fastball, the motor looks like something moved. No. The motor down here starts turning. And you see this arm here. Right? That's loose. When this starts turning, it's going to run around, but eventually that arm we were just looking at is going to hit that stop right there. See that nylon colored stop? And when it does, that makes it pitch. 
throw it forward. So it's throwing it from back here. Bam! And then it spins back around and it stops. Okay? So let's say you throw a change up. So a change up is a slow ball. This little pin pulls in, which allows this uh, little thing here to spin free like that. Right? And so then, same thing. It spins around, but look, now the little thing is not going to stop the, uh, is not going to stop the, uh, um, the arm. So it just makes the trajectory of it different. And then I don't know, I guess that just slides past that to get locked back in place until the pin pulls it again. So we've oiled the crap out of it so that it's loose as a goose. Okay, so if you hit a curveball, it throws a fastball, and then <laughs> I suppose it's with this, this here, when it gets past a little bit, so see the arm is just past where it threw it, I don't know this for sure, but I would guess it's this switch. There's a little timed thing here on this cam where this switch closes, which may be what tells the machine that it's the right time to turn on the uh, the magnet. So the magnet hits. The magnet hits and it actually affects the travel of the ball. So the, the ball goes right over the magnet towards your bat. And if the magnet hits, it curves the ball in the middle of the play field. Now, the problem is the magnet that was originally used on it, I can't find anywhere. I can't find the right one. The magnet that was on this machine is shorted. So the fuse was blown here um, because it had shorted, it was like a dead short. So I installed this one, which is the correct one for a Slugfest, which was the next machine. But a Slugfest is a little bit different. But since the pitch unit is very similar and the bat unit is very similar, I decided to make the magnet unit very similar. Um, so this one was, uh, I think it had the bracket or whatever. But anyway, I ordered a bracket too. And then, because I didn't have the right screws, I put little washers on it. You don't. You got to be careful whenever you put screws in the bottom of a playfield. Now those are the three original holes, but my problem is this magnet is thicker than the original magnet, so it's the the bracket is sitting up off of the playfield. So that's the best I could do, folks. We're we're retrofitting here, right? We're retrofitting. So the uh, you got to be careful whenever you put screws in the bottom of a playfield because if you go too thick. If the screw is too long, you'll go right through that playfield, and then now you got a screw sticking up through the bottom of the <laughs> bottom of the playfield. That's not good. That's wrong. That's bad. Okay, so I've wired in this magnet, and we're going to test it. It may be too strong, where it screws up the the ball play too much. It may be too weak, where it doesn't screw up the ball play enough. You know, but we're kind of at a at a place here where you can't. You can't get the original one, so it's kind of going to be whatever it is. It is. Um, and uh, I didn't replace the rubber on this just because it's still fine. Somebody's replaced that recently. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and I put the roller on like we were talking about. It's not quite touching the thing, though. I think it's probably supposed to touch it. But most of our play has gone out of that. I'm going to order the right coil, though. I don't even know if the coil has the, the correct resistance, you know. It, so it might be too weak or too strong. Of course, we have the rheostat here where we can we can change the how weak or how strong. So I'm going to lay it back down, and then we'll uh, we'll test it a little bit, and then we'll jump over to this one and check out this one. But I've, I've got a... I'm going to have to wait until we get that other coil in to finish this one up. But let's see, uh, let's see how it works, and let's see if the magnet works. One other issue that we have that I noticed when I was putting the bat back on 
is the bat is loose and it won't tighten up because it there's a little quarter inch square hole in there and this thing's just worn so there's play in the bat all of that's going to make you lose power too so I've ordered another bat too they don't make the old style bat either but they made this one which is the slugfest one and the one on this machine I'm moving the whole shaft when I do that so it's on the shaft at least tight and one thing I'm interested in is this is at a different angle you know so maybe it mounts on it different than this one so I, I don't know maybe this thing's screwed up but we'll figure it all out folks um, so let me set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit okay so I'm mainly going to show you how the pitches are working um, I've got it on free play so it's a one player game if you start a two player game which is that you can now control the pitches so I'm going to uh, now people you can't expect perfection from these things you know what I mean I mean it's all mechanical I mean there's stuff throwing the ball come on so if it's a little off yeah come on so but here's home plate so it should go over home plate no matter what right so we're gonna try it out so here's the fastball Okay, do another fastball. You see, it was a little bit different that time. Okay, so now we're going to do a uh, now we're going to do a change up, which is the slow ball. It is very, it's a lot slower, right? So we'll do fastball, change up. That's working, people. That's working. Now here's the hard one. What about the curveball? That was a curveball, people. <laughs> That's so damn cool. Now, I was looking at a video online of another one, and it looks like with the original magnet, the curve was more dramatic. That it would come all the way out here sometimes, and then back in. But on this one, you'll see it when it comes out, it'll curve it out a little bit, and then back in. Because you know, I'm no expert at baseball, but if the damn thing's got to go over home plate or that's a ball, right? So it's it's crazy that they were able to do that. It comes out, you'll see it move around the magnet and then back in the home plate. So we'll do the curve again. That time it wasn't as pronounced. You can see it, it's just a little bit, right? So I'll do the fastball to compare it. So we'll, we'll, uh, oh, we're up to, why is it saying player two? Oh, that was just the end of the first inning. Okay. Fastball. Curveball. I mean, you can see the curve. That one, that time it actually curved the other way. How the hell do they do that? All right, let's see if I can hit the curveball. Yes. Okay, the bat's working. Okay, let's see if I can hit the change up. Yep. I got an out, people. Change up. Curveball. Ooh. I wasn't ready for it. Curveball. That time it was pretty curvy. That was pretty curvy there. Okay, fastball. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Curveball. Yeah, sometimes I don't know how it does it, but sometimes the curve goes this way and sometimes it goes that way. I guess it just depends on how it comes out of the flat. The magnet hits it and pulls it back a little bit. Pretty wild, people. Pretty wild. Okay, so that one, we're waiting on the coil. Um, I think it's it's uh, pretty much doing its thing, though. This one over here, we've uh, ordered a magnet for, because we don't have any of that, and a magnet bracket, and we'll wire that all in. Um, but the bat looks pretty good, so uh, we'll, let's look at the second one now. 
All right, folks, so this is the right one. Our parts have came in. So I cleaned up the uh, bat unit you know, a little bit. I've got to oil it still, but I mean, it's strong as crap, so there's really nothing to replace on it. It's working great. And then this, uh, I got the, um, <laughs> I got the magnet in. Now it's a big old hefty magnet. It's the one out of a slugfest. And I ordered a new bracket for it. This is the bracket for a slugfest. Um, and so we've wired it up. The one amp fuse was not blown. And it is a one amp. So I don't, I guess, I don't know why they took the, uh, the magnet out. But they did. Uh, we've oiled the pitching unit. So I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the bat unit. And then we've still got the bat turned all the way down, uh, pretty much. Uh, I cleaned the relay that connects the power to the bat, and also cleaned the relay that connects the power to the magnet. Just that switch there, just like you would an EM. Just clean the switch off with the file. Um, and we're ready to try it. But this one was already playing, it just wouldn't do the curve. So the only thing really that we're checking is to see if that magnet will work. Um, or if it's going to screw us up. So let me lay it down, we'll turn it on, and then we'll try this one out. Uh, well, let me oil that bat unit before we lay it down, but then we'll lay it down and try it and uh, see if the magnet works for the curveball. All right, folks, it booted right back up. Let's see if we can start a two-player game. One player. Two player. All right, so we're going to check the curveball, but first let's try just the uh, the fast and the changeup like we did on the other one. So this is the fastball. All right, we'll do it one more time. So that's fast. Here's the changeup. A lot slower. I got a home run off that one. Okay, changeup. Definitely a lot slower. Okay. So, fast, change up. All right, cool. So we got those good, now let's try the curve. Hopefully she works. Well, I hit the wrong button. Hopefully she works. Whoa! <laughs> it definitely curved. Let's try it again. Hmm. Is it curving too much? So that was the curve. That's pretty good. That time it got over a little bit too far. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep throwing curve balls so we can see what kind of variety we get. That's a good curve. Seems like it's curving a little more on this one. That was just a fastball that time. Curveball. 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 Alright, I like it. I think we're good. Okay, so let's check. I got the parts in for the other one too. Let's go back to the left one. I know that you folks this is moving fast, but for me it's been like a week. But I got the parts in for the left one too, so let's go check it out. Okay, so on this one, remember it had that coil. That was the wrong coil. It took me a while to figure it out. Well, I knew it was, but it, it, it's not even close to the right coil. This is a 24-1400. And so, look, there's no sleeve. There was no sleeve in it. So I put a sleeve in it, but then the plunger wouldn't fit in it. So this is just the wrong, it's the wrong size, it's the wrong strength, all that crap. It was working, as you saw. Um, but I bought a brand new one. This is the correct one. It comes with a brass sleeve. Usually it's nylon, but on these it's brass for whatever reason. Um, so I popped it in. We're going to test it out. Now our magnet, on the other one, the magnet... Uh, fit a little better because I didn't have it spaced out as much. So the magnet on the other one is up against the play field just a little bit more. 
which I think is why we're getting more action out of that one. So I may I may space this one out so that it goes up uh, to the play field a little bit more and uh, see if we can get a little more action out of it. Uh, the pitching unit we already had right, so we already had the curve working on it. Basically, we just needed more strength out of the bat. Now I've got it turned all the way up, which is how we had it before whenever we were filming it. So we'll see how it works uh, with the power turned all the way up. Hopefully it. Hopefully it's not too strong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it's more strong than the last time we played it. Now, just so we're not confused, this is the one a couple videos I was filming um, uh, that had the wrong bat on it. And this is the, so it's always been the left one and the right one. I haven't moved them. This is the one we were just messing with to check the curveball. This one was working. We had the curve working. It's a little bit weaker though, but I think it's because that magnet isn't uh, flush with the playfield as much. Uh, and we've swap the uh, coils. So let me lay it down. I'll show you the new bat that we put on it. All right. So here's the replacement bat. Now there's a little difference with this one. You notice the bat is out over home plate and the, on the other one they had replaced some parts with some slugfest stuff. So the bat is back farther. I looked on the flyer for pennant fever and it shows the bat like this. So I don't know. I guess there's some, some difference with the uh, with something that they've replaced on the bat unit to make it sit different. But uh, on the flyer, it looks like this. So I think this is correct for pennant fever. I don't know. But we were just playing this one, and it plays fine with the bat like that. So I'm not going to mess with it, people. They're both playing good. What can I say? Uh, so this one has the new coil. Let me set up the tripod, and we'll check it with the new coil and see what we got. Oh, but I think uh, I'll put something in there, too, to space that... that uh, uh, to space that magnet up towards the play field and see if we can get a lot of action out of it like on the other side. And then if it is, we'll we'll uh, we'll figure out a way to do that a little more permanently. Okay, folks. So this is the left one again with the new bat. You can see the very end of it right there. Let's see what we got. Two-player game. Fastball. Ooh. Yeah, it's definitely stronger. <laughs> All right. Change up. Ooh, back got a home run. That was only a single. Okay. Let's try the curve. <laughs> okay. It's definitely a lot stronger. All right, so our new coil fixed all that. Whoa! I got a home run. Okay, I'm gonna play a little bit more here. Two outs in a row. All right. Okay, folks. Well, that's what we need to do. All right. So, if you get one of these, pitching unit needs oil. Uh, and I showed you that little uh, relay that makes it do the, the uh, change-up pitch. So, you have to look at that. Okay? And then the bat... You can't have any wobble here. So I got just a little bit of wobble now. You saw how it was earlier. So if you got that, replace that. Get you a new bat. They have those. You'll have to get this kind that's off of a slug fest though, but they fit right on there, no problem. And then we talked about rebuilding the batting unit the best we could. If the coil uh, looks abused or it's been changed out with the wrong one, get the correct coil. They do make those, still for pennant fever. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, the magnet. Um, you know, it's working, and it's kind of my only option right now. They don't they don't have the correct one available anywhere. So if you if you can't get the correct one for a pennant fever, if you put the one in it from a um, slugfest, it'll work. It's just not quite the same. So check that out. I got all of this stuff from the Pinball Resource and Marco Specialties. Marco Specialties has some cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to clean these up, and then we'll, uh, we'll get them looking a little better, 
and uh, I'll keep trying them out just to make sure everything's cool. And once we get them good, which will be tomorrow for you, for me it might be a week, but for you it'll be tomorrow. Once we get them ready to go, I will uh, film a video of us playing both of them and uh, going over all the little details and everything, just so that there's a final video of how they turned out. So, and we'll get the height and everything proper with the, the legs and all that. We'll get all the legs straightened out and how they're supposed to be. This one over here has got the wrong one. They're pretty rough. I mean, it's got mismatched legs and everything else. Woo! <laughs> but we'll get that taken care of. So one more video of us playing them. But I think they're both pretty much up and running. And uh, I can't think of anything else preventative to do to them. Now I just need to work on them a little bit cosmetically. So give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, sorry folks, this is just kind of how we do it around here. <laughs> it's about as good as it gets. Uh, leave your comments below, let us know what you think. And people try to be positive. What's with all the negative comments lately? What are people thinking? Ugh. So, uh, but leave whatever your comments are, even if you're a hater, down below, and uh, we'll try to respond to as many of them as we can. Have you checked out our brother channel yet, my brother Donnie? Go check that out. We're doing some crazy stuff right now. I believe we've probably started working on the grocery store by the time you've seen this. We bought an old beat-up grocery store. A little tiny one, though, not a big one. An old beat-up grocery store in a uh, small town that we're fixing up, trying to make it um, uh, suitable for renting to some people. we got some people that want to rent and put like antique shops and stuff in it. So we're messing with that. Go check that out on my channel, My Brother Donnie. It's me and guess who? My Brother Donnie. That's his actual name. My Brother. That's a, So My is his first name. Brother is his middle name. And Donnie is his last name. My Brother Donnie. So go check that out. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links to buy all your goodies on Amazon. They had Prime Day the other day and people bought all kinds of stuff. We appreciate that. So if you don't know about that, if you click our link before you buy something on Amazon... It gives us a little royalty because we just sent you to Amazon. So uh, a lot of people have been doing that. Thank you very much. Saw somebody on there earlier was buying like some computer networking equipment, um, wireless routers and that kind of stuff. So thank you whoever that was. But people have been buying all kinds of stuff. Even if you buy some chocolate chips, it gives us a little piece of it. So <laughs> it's, it's interesting to see what people buy on there. It doesn't say who bought it. It just says what they bought. And uh, people have been sending us a couple gifts lately, so we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Um, thank you for those. We don't really ask for those, but if people want to, we don't. Uh, we certainly don't turn down a gift. So, uh, thank you for everybody that's been watching. Leave your comments below, and we'll come back with one more video of us playing this thing. This is Pennant Fever.